Hello everyone and welcome to another video and today we're just gonna have to get right into it mainly because this is a really busy day with both Global and JP getting the basically their big updates right before Christmas on the same day uh, it makes for a busy time for me so let's just get into it uh, there is something that we need to know right away right away before we do anything before we talk about the banner though Okay, uh, in the raid rewards, now we know there are no limited time tickets. Of course there aren't. It's it's only Christmas, Alum. Why would you do that? Uh, of course, they would not want to do that. Now, the second big question to ask... Music's just great, though. Aw, it's just a single target. That's so lame. Why, Alum? Why must you ruin my fun? Ah, it's totally fine. Anyway, let's just destroy him and just get on with it, shall we? Uh, yeah. Uh, a couple of questions that I wanted to know before we got into this kind of, into this banner and everything, was first of all, is, you know, the guard armor multi pieced and no and sadly it's not also there are no limited time tickets in the raid rewards so that definitely makes the uh triple uh tickets you can get off regular kind of worse and uh that feels just bad man we really gotta have a chat with alum about that i know why they're doing it i just don't have to like why they're doing it so yes here we are, it is time to talk about the Kingdom Hearts banner, a banner that I'm sure many people are curious about. So first of all, let's take a look at Cloud, and isn't that nice Christmas background that has nothing to do? First of all, uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what reminds me of the game. I gotta say, his sprite looks really cool in a 7 star, and his limit burst, whoosh. Pretty cool. And his victory animation? Yeah, I mean, it's Cloud. What else would it be? Oh, it's Dead Cloud. Anyway, uh, taking a look at Cloud. Cloud, first of all, his TMR, you know, it's pretty damn solid uh, all around. I don't think that it feels that great. It's a 40 attack, 10 defense, 10 spirit accessory with 50% true dual hand. Not exactly the most exciting thing. Uh, it's basically kind of like another Axtar TMR. It's, you know, slightly better, but it, 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 I mean, at least I think so. Now I just have to know for not driving me insane. Yeah, it's slightly better. It's got some defense and spirit on it, but nothing to really write home about. As well, Cloud Super TMR is kind of feels the exact same. It's not really that exciting of a super TMR. It's basically 10 extra attack because as you know, if you put bandages on a sword, it becomes more deadly. Whatever. Now, Cloud's base attack is, you know, if I was to sum up Cloud in a just a brief statement, Cloud is essentially slight is a better version than his older one, which is good because what we saw with Squall and his World of Final Fantasy version was essentially the exact same thing, a, the exact same TMR and the exact same Super TMR. So it's nice here that his kit is slightly improved. What's the big things? Well, I mean, now he does get some chaining, which is pretty interesting. And it's not only chaining, it's backloaded chaining too. So... Yeah, that's really, really quite good. I mean, in his kit, he has a way to give himself uh, a big attack boost for multiple turns, and he has a big, you know, attack that can just do a lot of damage. Uh, but this is kind of the big thing here. It's seven hits. It is Divine Ruination Frames, to my knowledge, and it is backloaded damage. More importantly, it's heavy backloaded damage. But this is not the real interesting thing. I mean, really, looking at most of Cloud's kit, Cloud's kit is essentially fine. I think it's fine. It's not exciting. It's not super interesting to me. It's fine. It is passable. It's nice that Cloud has something else to do other than his limit burst, but let's be honest, 
This is the big thing here. Cloud's Limit Burst is insanely powerful. Seven hit, 2000% physical attack, ignoring 50% defense. Now, if you stack this with Limit Burst damage uh, up as well as Bahamut's tier, this is potentially the strongest Limit Burst in the game. Once again, Clouds. Now, why is it so strong? Well, if you just, I mean, 50% defense on a 2000 stat attack is super high. In his kit, he already has limit burst damage up. The Some of the new four stars, as well as Squall, Super TMR, have materials that up limit burst. But if you include Bahamut's tier that gives an element onto this, pair this with CG Lightning and you got, you got yourself a stew going, baby. I gotta say, this is a very, very, very powerful limit burst. The chaining, while it is a, you know, it is a definite decent modifier on it, uh, and it can be multicasted. Uh, first of all, you have to understand that uh, here on the JP side, Divine Ruination has kind of been out for a little bit right now. AT chaining is pretty much the popular chaining family. So with newer ones, Squall kind, or Cloud here, sorry, has a little bit more of a hard time necessarily finding some of the newer chaining partners that are super reliable for him. But more, I mean, it's just essentially Cloud's limit burst is so strong. Now with Bahamut's tier and a, you know, CG Lightning debuffing, there is probably some OTKs and some insane shit that you can do with Cloud. And for that reason, if you do get Cloud, you definitely shouldn't be disappointed, although there is very specific equipment you're going to want to get the most out of him. So I would say that Cloud is pretty damn good. If TMR, Super TMR, it's all just a pretty good package, and nothing really excites me as of yet, but then again, I don't have Bahamut's tier. Now let's talk about Sora. Now this is the one I think a lot of people have been waiting for, me especially. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is a game that I absolutely love, so it's really cool to see Sora in the game. His limit burst is Ragnarok, which looks super cool. Pretty damn good. Oh, dead Sora. Oh, that's too bad. That's eh, okay. He'll turn into a Heartless and be brought back. It's fine. It's just Kingdom Hearts things. Now, looking at his TMR, the Keyblade, this is a really just a damn solid TMR. Uh, especially for Sora, I should say. This is actually probably one of the best TMRs. When I talk about equipment for characters, I really, a lot of the times, just bring up that a TMR is usually a long-term cap on a lot of characters. Even with the Super TMR update, because not everybody can get Super TMRs, I have to say that I really, really don't like equipment, especially weapons, especially non-elemental weapons. But with true dual hand units, it's not quite as bad. So 160 attack is pretty good, but it's the benefits that Sora gets with it that are really interesting here. All elemental resistance of 10% across the board is super nice if you consider it all the elemental trials, and especially the trials that just hit you with an element at the start of battle where you have to stack elemental resistance on your characters. 10% is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, it, it goes a long way to make a attacker especially uh, immune to that kind of stuff. So this is really, really nice. Not only that, but he also gets 30% true dual hand from equipping this and an extra 5% recovery of MP. So that's all really good. Super TMR is just a 70, flat 70 stat attack boost as well as 50% true dual wield. So 120% stats, it's not quite exciting. It's, I wish it was 170%, but I'm really greedy here. It's, it's, it's good, it's powerful. It doesn't have a condition. There's, this is super TMR level for sure, especially with the true dual wield meta coming in. Feels just really nice. Bots and passive wise, uh, pretty nice statted for a true dual wielder definitely extra points put into attack so he is very much that uh mp and everything pretty nice hp wise pretty nice so i don't feel super complainy pantsy about this one also his equipment swords great swords and katanas the really big ones swords especially right now are super important you can also equip light shields which is you know kind of nice and his armor selection is fairly decent too 
uh, especially with clothes or robes, I should say. Uh, again, you can probably build this guy pretty easily for elemental resistance, which is important to note. So now we get into Sora's kit. Now, Limit Burst is the thing I want to bring up kind of first, because Ragnarok is a six hit ability so its chain in is probably only with Sora it does have a 3000 percent physical attack which is a pretty high percentage but it also debuffs a single target for 65 percent full stats across the board which is important when I talk about the full thing or everything at the end it also gives him access to or triple cast of his abilities computer bug off uh basically gives him triple cast of his abilities for four turns uh his limit burst costs 32 crystals which isn't super expensive but um high high percentage of damage on a limit burst as well as debuffing or full breaking the enemy for 65 percent yeah it's not 75 percent but uh, potentially just having that on your attacker so you don't need to bring a breaker is uh it's pretty good it's pretty good as it turns out it's pretty probably pretty really good uh looking at his kit he has a whole bunch of different abilities some that can debuff the enemy for 50 percent defense some that can increase his limit burst he has multi-hit attacks which are which is potentially great for arena as essentially that is like dark veritas or fire ice laswell uh just being able to hit four hits in a turn so it's okay. He has an AoE 8-hit uh, ability. Remind me later, computer. Not when I'm reviewing shit. That also gives him a 130% attack boost. He has Sonic Rave, which is 6 hits. And unless there's going to be a 6-hit chain family, this is kind of weird. Combo. Now we get into a 7-star, though. Combo Plus gives a 200% attack boost for 4 turns. And a self 300% modifier on some of his abilities, as well access to triple cast for four turns. It's on a six turn cooldown, but if you activate this at the start of the fight, Sora gets very quickly up to his um, max amount of damage. And that's important to note here. Looking at the rest of his last two abilities he gets in his seven star, uh, the one that I really like is Ars Arcanum. Wait, nope. There. be or last arcanum sorry our uh, rast arcanum uh is a at chaining ability that is at 1100 percent with an extra 200 percent uh for each use up to four times so a 1900 percent max out uh pretty pretty high uh attack and i think this is really good again i'm in the summary strike raid uh aoe one hit 1000 percent that also debuffs defense and spirit for four turns aoe so that's really nice too uh in his passive wise he has 30 percent chance to just evade um physical attacks naturally and more importantly in his kit he actually has 10 percent recovery of mp per turn and natural three limit first crystals per turn very good he has the extra chaining ability he has also, interestingly, a little bit of a boost for True Dual Wield, although you would just not want to equip this guy with True Dual Wield because he does actually... He is basically a True Dual Wield unit, and he has natural True Dual Wield in his kit, so that's perfectly fine. He also has Last, uh, or last Chance, which is a 60% chance to ignore one fatal attack when above 40%. He has natural limit burst fill rate. He has... Boost for, you know, dual wielding, of course. I do believe in his kit he has, what is it? I think it's 100%. Uh, when true dual wielding, plus an extra 20% and 30% from his Keyblade, so 150% naturally. He'll hit the true dual wield cap very, very easily, which is great uh, if you want to build him and you don't have that much equipment yet. And just extra limit burst damage, extra modifiers for some of his attacks. And he has some magic too, which is kind of cool. I wish it was kind of Arrow the defensive spell from Kingdom Hearts 1, because that thing was fucking badass, but there you go. 
So here is my general thoughts of Sora and Cloud. First of all, Sora is a very powerful dual wielder with potentially more survivability that quickly gets up to gear. And this is the important stuff. I think that one on his limit burst, having a 65% break con uh, a lot of the time and potentially really accessible on a high hitting or high damage dealing attack is really, really good to say the least. But not only that, looking at the rest of his kit, um, you know, he has AT chaining, he has uh, some natural debuffs, he can basically get up into gear very quickly, and his TMR doesn't hurt him too much, it actually is a pretty nice benefit. If you look at the amount, even though he can have like triple casting essentially constantly of his abilities, the big thing here that I really like in Sora's kit is that he has 15% MP recovery. That's a lot of MP recovery to essentially support that triple casting constantly. Is it enough? Not entirely sure. Uh, would probably need to test it out, but with door pots, it could be kind of interesting on Sora to say the least. Looking at Cloud, Cloud is definitely a more specific um, build, and I don't think he's quite up to the, what will become CG Cloud. CG Cloud in the future will probably be loads better than this, but um, Cloud himself isn't necessarily a bad thing. Giving him chaining as well as a incredibly stupidly powerful limit burst if you have Bahamut's tier, you probably should not sleep on Cloud. He might be a, you know, a new version of Regina for the Thunder element, and elements is something that Regina just naturally lacks. Uh, Cloud with Bahamut's tier could push it to new levels. So if you have Bahamut's tier, really show it off because I am very curious about Cloud. Either way, uh, absolutely amazing sprites. Great job, Alum. And um, it's just a shame that those uh, that the kits just don't have. Uh, or I mean, uh, it's just a shame that we didn't get Riku too. Well, it's actually also a shame that the raid doesn't give away a couple of free ticket, limited tickets. That would be nice, Alum. Yeah, and unfortunately for anyone who's wondering. You can't use those tickets from uh, previous ones, uh, limited events on the JP side. But uh, to celebrate Kingdom Hearts, because I'm excited about it, we're going to use a 30% ticket and see if we get a little lucky. Because why not? Nope, nope, no luck, no luck. Isn't that a shame? Oh good, well, that's a little bit sucky, but... It's a 30% ticket. What do you expect? Anyway, you guys, uh, that is all for now, and I will see you next time for another video about, well, the global side, because the global side is next to talk about. Anyway, have a happy holidays. See you next time.